के सी वेणुगोपाल जी के सुधाकरण जी रमेश चेनीथाला जी ए पी अनिल कुमार जी एडवोकेट टी सिद्दीक जी एडवोकेट के प्रवीण कुमार जी एम ए रजाक मास्टर जी के के अब्राहम जी एडवोकेट जयंत जी एडवोकेट एम नियास जी वी एस जॉय जी ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स friends from the media i'd like to welcome all of you here today while i was sitting on the stage they asked me to look at the documentary the picture made about the project so when i turned around i noticed that there is not a single woman sitting on the stage i'm sure the women here understand what i'm saying 50% of india is women so i understand don't put 50% but at least put 10 or 15% it is it is dangerous to make me look towards the back of the stage it's always a, a honor for me to come back to speak to you here in my constituency i must tell you that when i was uh, walking on the bharat jodo yatra for almost 5 months i was constantly missing my constituency wayanar and the people of wayanar and i don't feel as if i have a political relationship with you i feel that you have adopted me as your family member and as you have adopted me as a family member it means that i also have to treat you like family members and that means having a emotional affectionate relationship with all the people of wayna it does not matter which political formation you are from you are all members of my family of course if i meet people from the left front i will try and convince them that their ideology is not the correct one and of course i am sure they might try to convince me also and i am happy to disagree with them but i still consider them as people of my family and i think this is the spirit or should be the spirit of our entire country we are all one family and we are allowed to have disagreements but disagreement should not become hatred or anger or violence and i can say that having traveled in most of the states of this country this idea is deeply held in our tradition as a nation mutual respect affection love for each other these are things that go into our history in every religion hinduism islam christianity hinduism Sikhism, judaism every single religion in the idea that you should be able to express yourself the idea that you should be allowed a voice and almost as important that you should allow other people a voice in my talk in cambridge university i told the students that in the 21st century everybody wants to talk but nobody wants to listen but if you think about it talking without listening is completely useless and we did the bharat chodo yatra for the same purpose we did not speak much we listen 7 8 hours a day silently and we used to listen we used to speak for 15 20 minutes in the evening and that is the spirit of democracy now there is a group of people who are in power in delhi who do not seem to understand this that democracy is about speaking not about shouting but about speaking and about listening it is not about insulting people humiliating people frightening people being arrogant it is not about spreading violence that was the idea behind the bharat jodo yatra and that message went through the country loud and clear and it was received throughout the country every single institution of this country is under attack the democratic foundation the parliament 
the judiciary a free press the election commission the bureaucracy every single institution is under attack and it is my duty and all our duties to fight this assault on democracy to fight the assault on india's voice to fight the violence and hatred that the bjp and rss are spreading now there is a confusion in the mind of the prime minister of the bjp and of the rss they are under the impression that they are india they think that they themselves are the whole of india the prime minister is one indian person he is not india no matter how delusional he might be no matter how arrogant he might be he is not this country he is one individual citizen of this country so the bjp and the rss have forgotten that there are 1.4 billion people in this country and this country is not the rss or the bjp or mr narendra modi and in no way is a criticism or an attack on the prime minister on the bjp or the rss an attack on india they are two different things in fact by attacking democratic structures by attacking the institutions of this country the prime minister the bjp and the rss are attacking india and there is no condition under which i will stop saying this many people might be scared of the bjp of narendra modi of the rss of the police i am not scared of them in the least i am not scared of them and that is their problem their problem is they cannot understand why i am not scared of them they can frighten most people pressurize most people terrorize most people they cannot do it to me and there is a reason the reason is i believe in the truth and i fight for the truth and it does not matter to me how much i am attacked how many times the police is sent to my house how many cases i have on me it does not matter i stand for the truth that is the way i am people who lie their entire life who hide behind lies will never be able to understand this and the truth does not change depending on where you say it the truth is the same in wayanad as it is in delhi as it is in haryana as it is in rajasthan it does not change just because you go to another place and the truth is the rss the bjp and the prime minister of india are attacking the idea and the institutions of india and i will say it again and again and again and again i've come here to meet you and to give the keys to some of the houses that we have built when i first came here there were tragic floods that had taken place and many families had lost their loved loved ones and their houses and many people had requested us to help them with a house in 2021 september i took this up with our leaders in wayanad and it was a small idea to help wayanad's widows wayanad's families who had been hurt by the floods it was not a ambitious scheme it started very small that can we help our mothers and sisters who have been hurt by the floods and we planted a little seed that is now slowly growing and i can see that it is going to grow much bigger than we thought it's not been a easy journey because there are many challenges in building houses in finding beneficiaries in making sure that they are the right person sometimes the houses have to be built in very difficult terrain we have to make sure that the costs are optimal because we want to make sure that as many families as possible can benefit so today i'm quite proud to come here and hand over the keys to six houses this is a milestone 
for our work and it is only because of the workers and the leaders of the Congress party and the people of Wayanad that this has been possible. I would especially like to thank our party workers, leaders, block Congress presidents, Mandalam presidents, UDF allies and every single person who supported us. And also the people of Wayanad who help us with this project. And I think any help we can get from the people of Wayanad to give houses to our family members would be appreciated. I've been pestering the leaders in Wayanad that one of these days I want to come and help build one of the houses with them. But they haven't given me an answer yet. So hopefully, hopefully we can, all of us together, including PCC President and Chenithala ji, build some houses in Wayanad. Once again, it is always a pleasure and honor for me to come to this beautiful place. It is almost like a home for me now. I understand that farmers are facing huge difficulties, not just in Wayanad, but in the whole of the country. And I know that farmers here have been hit very badly by falling prices of rubber and coconut. And I'm also aware, like all of us are, that farmers face a huge challenge as a result of wild animals in our constituency. The central and state governments are also trying to displace farmers in the name of environmental protection. They're trying to impose laws like ESA and ESZ in residential areas. And land and residents of farmers are being encroached upon. And the people who are supposed to be protecting the farmers are colluding to harm them. And they're also not receiving any assistance such as compensation, support price, procurement, subsidy, etc. And I think it is very, very important that the government of Kerala looks into these issues. Farmers are the backbone of this country and they need to be protected and supported. And I would also like to tell the Congress party, UDF leaders and workers that they should raise these issues aggressively in Wayanad and in Kerala. And I'm always ready to help the farmers in this area by raising their, their issues both locally and in the Parliament House. Thank you.